Hey everybody, welcome back to some more early morning barking, talking about BPD and MPD by somebody that has both. I'm doing this outside, obviously, um, and the sun is in my eyes, so I'm squinting. I didn't think of that before I started videoing this, but we'll just go with it. So today I'm going to do one of those topics that I enjoy because I think this riles some people up. I think I'm going to get some angry comments on this one. And I love the angry comments. They make me know that I've wound you up and that I love that. So I'm, I'm going to do that. <laughs> right? There are some aspects of narcissism that, well, I understand very well. Because I've lived with them and gone through them. And I've done the therapy. And I try not to do those things anymore. But some of those things go beyond NPD, right? These are the traits we're talking about that make people in general say things like, oh, you're so narcissistic. Look at all the narcissistic people on social media. Look at all the narcissists everywhere. And of course, they're not all people with NPD. That's not how this works. There are nine markers. You have to have at least five of them, which means you can have four or fewer and not be an official narcissist. You don't get to join the club. But you can still be, for want of a better phrase, an arsehole. Mm -hmm. And one of the things this keeps coming up for me on is this attitude of everyone who disagrees with me is evil. <laughs> and I find it really interesting because I used to be that way. I used to believe this. I used to have this attitude that, you know, everyone who disagrees with me, there's something wrong with them. If their view of the world is different to mine, they must be broken in some ways. And I, I understand where it comes from. What I find really curious about it all is that as I went through therapy, as I started working on narcissistic tendencies, as I started identifying these personality traits that I had and, and working to change them, I became, what's the right way of putting this, less supportive of the behavior of the left wing of politics. I think that's the way, best way of putting it. I don't want to say I became less left wing because I didn't at all at any point. I'm an extremely left wing person, perhaps to an alarmingly socialist degree. Like I, I would take this country being a complete and total dictatorship if I was the guy in charge. There's, there's your narcissism, right? So I'm fairly left wing to say the least, right? Uh, what I stopped doing that other people on the left didn't like was I stopped hating people that I didn't agree with. I got over this attitude of everybody who doesn't share my worldview is evil. Because, well, I was working on it, right? I was purposefully looking at this, this trait in my life and I know where it comes from for me. It's like, well, I'm right, right? I'm, I'm, I'm right. I'm correct in whatever my opinion is. So if you disagree with me, you must be an idiot because I've decided what the exact right, obvious course of action is in this situation, whatever this situation may be. And if you disagree, you are therefore a fool. And that was, that was how I approached it. And I, you know, learned this lesson, Lily. That's not the case. That's not the case. We're all working from our own individual book of references as to how the world should work. We're all forming our own opinions based on our life experiences, our history, our present, all of these things. And just because someone hasn't come to the same conclusion I have doesn't mean they're easy, doesn't mean they're bad, doesn't mean they're stupid. And so I got over this idea. And... Um, and as soon as you start getting over this idea, you start seeing it permeating its way through popular culture. And the way it got into politics is this idea of, it's a very similar thing, like I'm right and I'm a good person. Therefore, anyone who disagrees with me is not right and a bad person. Interesting. And that's just not true. That's, that's just not the case. I don't know how to refute that, really. It's, it's such an absurd assumption to make that everyone who disagrees with me is in some way bad or evil or has bad intentions or, or is 
approaching a problem from a negative perspective in some way. And yet this attitude continues to permeate its way through the way we talk to each other, from the way we treat each other, from the opinions we form of each other. And, you know, politically, both sides are guilty of this. I'm not picking on anyone particularly. I just saw it most pronounced in the side that I was on at the time. And all it does <laughs> is the same things it did to me working with my MPD. It was that it made me an asshole to people. It made me very unlikable. It made me wrongs, which I hate more than the other two. And certainly in the case of politics or anything where you might want to persuade somebody to your opinion, it does anything but that. Because I think this is something I, you know, I, I blame the left especially for this, this idea that, you know, everybody should want to be on your side if they're not that evil. And we tend to, we, the left tend to, uh, seem to have hooked onto this idea that if we become more abusive and more horrible to people and more obnoxious in the way we present our views, if we become uh, harder to ignore and just persistent and, and angry and frustrated and everything, then we'll somehow build bridges and change people's opinions, which is certainly not true. Not true at all. I always used to feel like, you know, it was it was the, the right side of politics who would play the dirty jokes, the attack ads, all that side of thing. And I, I remember being very impressed with Michelle's Obama, Michelle Obama's sort of, when they go low, we go high. That's a great attitude. But it, it seemed like the opposite happened. It seemed like it was a kind of, the right went low and the left said, hold my beer. And so when I stopped doing that, when I got better, when I dealt with this problem, it kind of went away from me. It kind of stopped being a thing. And now I can listen to people talk about their thing all day. And I don't have to agree with them. I, I can sit there and argue and I can say what you're saying makes no sense and that sort of thing. But I don't have this inbuilt capacity for hate anymore. There's plenty of people in the world that I don't like, that I don't agree with, that I wouldn't want to spend time with. But hate, that's reserved for the genuinely evil, genuinely bad, the undebatably without, um, you know, the, there, are, there are people in this world we can all agree are bad and evil. They do bad, evil things that none of us debate over being bad or evil. These are the people who hurt people, who commit crimes, who do all sorts of bad, evil things. There's lots of capacity for that in the world. But we've started assigning that attitude to everyone who disagrees with us. And I think what is missed is this is a very narcissistic way of looking at the world. This is a very narcissistic way of trying to deal with things. This attitude that, of course, I'm right and I'm a good person. Of course I am. And leaving no room in that to be wrong, to be corrected, to learn new information, to say, oh, God, I had that wrong. You see, that was, that was where it started getting to me the most. When I started failing in business, failing in other things, was because I couldn't see where I was wrong. I couldn't deal with it. I could only handle the fact that I was right. And every course of action I was taking in business was, of course, the correct one. Anyone would have done the same thing. Any smart business mode, that is. But I'm sat here without a business. The irrefutable proof that my attitude was incorrect is this massive lack of business, right? I was wrong and everything folded. There was a very immediate, short-term indication of how I was wrong, that I couldn't get past, that I, I couldn't dispute, I couldn't argue with, because if I was right, then there'd be a business and I'd be rich and famous. But I'm not. The proof is right there. The proof is the fact that this video exists. 
And when you have these short-term consequences of your actions, you can learn from them pretty quick. You can certainly sense that something's wrong and I'm not doing this the right way. But I think when we do it in society, when we do it in this, this, this bigger, wider space that affects everything, then the feedback is much more garbled. You know, you can attack somebody for their opinions and you'll find people who agree with you. You'll find people who share your opinion and they'll tell you that you're right to attack that person or that, or they'll join in with you and also attack that person. That's a big thing, right? The pile on, the cancelling people, all of this. Like, we're as a group united in our hatred of this individual and we will destroy them without any hint of irony there without noticing no you're the you're the the rabble you're the mob you're the bullying ones who are going after this person to lynch them because they don't agree with you and you've decided that you're good people you're good people and anyone who dis disagrees with you is evil and therefore must be destroyed and you see the problem there. Well, what what happened to anyone who disagrees with you is evil, and let's talk to them and figure out what they've got going on. Let's figure out why that's their attitude. Is there anything we can do to change it? What has caused them to come to that conclusion? Is there a conversation we can have here and build a bridge and find common ground so that we can talk and maybe find some sort of compromise or change opinions in a positive way? No, no. That would make sense. That's the post-therapy attitude, right? We're not talking about that. We're talking about this narcissistic tendency of, you, you said this thing, now I must destroy you. I don't know if it has anything to do with a sort of oversensitivity to other people sort of like needing the world to be how you want it to be and when it's not a tantrum ensues. I sort of feel like that's what it is. You know, what was it Darwin said? The 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 creatures that survive the most are the ones, you know, most able to adapt to change. It's not survival of the fittest or the strongest or the biggest or whatever. It's it's the creatures that can greatly adapt to change that survive throughout time. And there's something to be taken from that. Sticking where you are, staying in your own space, in your own opinion, in your own thoughts, and blaming everybody else for being wrong when they disagree with you, is only harmful to you. It leaves you stuck in your own little bubble, in your own little space, and you don't grow or evolve. And in a changing environment, it can mean self-destruction in some ways. We have to be able to adapt to change. We have to be able to adapt to others, to try and empathize, to see the world through their eyes, to understand why they've come to the conclusions they've come to. Otherwise, we're just living in this little narcissistic bubble of self-belief and self-worth and self-indulgence. I'm right, you're wrong, I'm good, you're evil. Not everybody is your enemy. Not everybody hates everybody. Not everybody is evil. Just because they disagree with you on whatever topic you may care to be disagreed with. And I understand that some of these things are personally very important to a lot of people and that can be difficult to get over with. But look, I did it with everything everything i you know pick a thing i was right you were wrong and it turned out for a lot of them i wasn't as right as i thought i was and so you have to start digging into other things and say was i wrong about that thing too and sometimes no no i wasn't wrong about that thing i can stick with my opinion and that's fine but sometimes i can see something or read something or watch something that causes me to reevaluate. You have to be able to take in new information and not just retreat to social media to see your social media influencers who definitely just agree with you and reinforce your opinion, who probably gave you that opinion in the first place. I think we call that being a non-playing character. I think that's what that is. I just repeat what I read my favorite influencers say on Twitter 
And if anyone disagrees with me, they're evil. And if I'm shaken in that belief, I just go back to my original source and suck it all up again. That's no good. That's no good. I mean, I learned it because my original source was me, right? I didn't have influences. I still don't have influences. It all came from within. And it was easy for me to see that this is no good. This isn't getting me anywhere. This is hurting me. This is hurting people around me. It's upsetting people I communicate with. And it's not doing anything. It's not winning anything. It's not changing any minds. It's not persuading anyone of anything. It's just making them hate me. And I think until we can all sort of identify this behavior ourselves and start to get over it, we're not going to see any real progression, a real evolution or growth or change or whatever, because we're all just stuck in our own little factions, doing our own little things, hating everybody else, believing that we're right. And so take it from me. It does you no good. It only hurts you in the long term. And in the short term, it just makes people hate you and wish you would shut up. The quicker people realize that, I think the better off we're all going to be. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for watching, everybody. Like and subscribe and do all that. Don't forget you can get extra videos and stuff on Patreon and just generally support the channel, which I appreciate massively and desperately need you to do. If you want to do a one-to-one -one session with me, those are available to book over at earlymorningbarking.com. I won't be outside and doing weird things with my eyes because I'm squinting because sun, although it's sort of not, not much of it. I mean, this is still the north of England. This is summer. This is late July, and it's, it's miserable. Anyway, you take care. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Yeah.